Hello and welcome to Studio 415. On today's show, you'll see how Carol is connecting with students on the other side of the world. You'll hear what students are doing to get prepared for college, and the next Charger Challenge has students facing off in a game of Guess Who It Is. All that and more coming up next. Most people don't get a physical letter these days. So, especially getting one from Japan is really exciting. Dear God, that is President Teddy Roosevelt. Are you, are you kidding me? Welcome to Studio 415. I'm Gabriella Hall. Aspen Meadow Elementary was originally set to open in fall of 2020, but was set back due to a variety of reasons. However, the elementary school is finally finishing up just in time for kindergarten enrollment. In my story, you'll get a first look at the finished building and hear more about what makes Aspen Meadow special. Aspen Meadow is the eighth elementary school in the Knox District. The school is currently working on finishing touches and will be ready to open in the fall of 2021, welcoming about 500 new students from other elementary schools. Future principal Kim Lockmiller believes that it's important to pay attention to every little detail in order to provide the best experience for her students. The layout of Aspen Meadow is similar to Eel River and Cedar Canyon, but differs in some areas such as the cafeteria and the library, which has been given a unique theme. Every classroom in the building has been given special desks that provide plenty of space for the standard student Chromebook, as well as leave room for paper assignments. Classrooms are also designed to make it easier for teachers to move desks and rearrange them. All rooms of the building are also upgraded with new technology such as new phones and printers, as well as dimmable lights. Lockmiller put in a lot of planning and is especially proud of the gym and the library. The Aspen Meadow Library is different when compared to other elementary schools, as it was designed specifically for young students to learn in a comfortable setting. The Media Center has many different areas for students, such as easily movable flower seats and large tree-shaped benches for studying. Walking around the school, the Aspen Meadow Bulldog mascot can be spotted in many places, along with various dog-themed decorations and rooms, adding to the Bulldog pride. As the building prepares to open this fall, Nax is planning on adding new bus routes and transferring students from many different elementary schools in the district. They are also planning to move some teachers around from different schools, as well as welcome new ones to the Nax family. Students will most likely be coming together from Huntertown, Eel River, and Cedar Canyon to become Aspen Meadow Bulldogs. Lockmiller is looking forward to the start of the year and hopes to open just like everybody else. Although similar to other schools such as Every two years, the Japanese classes take a trip to Japan to put their communication skills into practice and learn more about Japanese culture. However, the ongoing pandemic has brought a halt to these visits until 2023. Studio 415 reporter AJ Bain has more on how the class is finding new ways to connect with Japanese students without the anticipated trip. When the pandemic postponed the biannual trip, Japanese teacher Laura Sembo was determined to still give students the chance to use what they've learned in a special way. After communicating with a teacher from her sister school, Yamate Gakuin, in Yokohama, Japan, she came up with a solution. Students from both schools would become pen pals. Students in Japanese 2, 3, and AP classes began by selecting a partner from the Japanese school based on their common interests, and then write two letters, one in English and one in Japanese, so both schools can get to practice their language skills. After being looked over by the teacher, the letters are then sent to students in Japan, where they will write their responses. Although the students will not be traveling to Japan this year, Japanese teacher Laura Semba believes this new method of communication will build new relationships with the students in Japan. I think it, it creates a sense of excitement because they, you know, most people don't get a physical letter these days. And so especially getting one from Japan is really exciting. And um, the chance to communicate with people across the world is amazing. And then hopefully um, they'll be able to go to Japan in the near future. So there's a chance that they can actually meet these people they've been communicating with. Through these letters, Carol's Japanese students are also developing language skills that are difficult to attain in the American classroom. Because what they teach in most schools concerning languages, it's more of the formal part. But most language speakers don't actually speak it that way. They have informal slang. So I feel like 
her writing in Japanese to me and the way you hold normal conversations will help me pick up on how normal people speak rather than in school setting. Although the letters provide a safe way for students to communicate across the globe, the project has not come without its issues. The letters take time to write and be sent. And due to the ongoing pandemic, things have been noticeably slowed down. As of now, the students have only received one letter from their pen pals. And with cancellations and students being quarantined, time in class has been limited. In a time of social distancing, students have been brought closer together across the world. I was actually under quarantine when I had to send my letter. They never got the actual paper, they just got a printout. But I think it's kind of cool that we can still communicate by pen with people across the world. While the annual trip has been postponed for the next few years, students are expected to set foot in Japan in 2023. For any freshman or sophomore interested in taking Japanese and going on the annual trip, you can see Japanese teacher Laura Semba in room 154. For Studio 14, I'm A.J. Bain. Preparing for college can be a daunting task for many high school students. Thankfully, Carroll's guidance department offers resources to aid in the college search. Studio 14 reporter Jaden Boyce talked to the guidance counselors to get their opinion on how students can better prepare. As the 2021 school year comes to a close, it's time for upperclassmen to prepare for college or trades. Megan Wingard, a Carroll guidance counselor, believes that it's never too early to start looking. I mean, really any time throughout high school. I mean, I feel like even in eighth grade, we have some students that are already starting to look. I would especially say sophomore, junior year is going to be your best time frame. I think senior year is a little late. Although it's recommended to start your college search early, seniors still have time to apply. While taking AP and dual credit classes are a great way to strengthen your application, both guidance counselors agree that the best way to make your college applications more appealing is to get involved. I think one of the biggest things is making sure you are involved at school. So getting involved in different clubs and activities. If you're an athlete, obviously being in a sport is great. Community service, so things that you can do outside of Carroll, that always helps kind of set you apart from other students. For those who need more resources, the CHS website under the Guidance tab has options for non-college on students, as well as college information and scholarship opportunities. Um, we also encourage students to go and look at college websites as well. They have their own specific you know, scholarships for their schools, so we always tell students to go there. Preparing for the logistics of college is only the start of the greater readiness that comes with the new chapter. Senior Josh Jackson gave some insight on the mental and emotional aspect of college readiness. Uh, honestly, not that prepared. I haven't looked into it that much. Um, I mean, I feel like, you know, just going through high school and like doing work there, I'll be fine. But, you know, I guess we'll see. Both guidance counselors recommended that keeping a schedule and seeking tutoring assistance if needed can help seniors prepare for college life. For Studio 415, I'm Jaden Boyce. We are in the second week of March and spring is on everyone's minds. Weather specialist Jaden Boyce is joining us now to tell us if we have a warm-up coming. Thanks, Gabby. Taking a look at the national weather radar, things are looking fairly dry in the Midwest until about Wednesday, when a fairly large but mild weather band starts to form over the Iowa and Missouri area and moves up towards Wisconsin. In Indiana, it looks like we might catch some of those small outer bands from that Wisconsin storm that might result in some potential showers later on in the week. Taking a look at our local weather forecast, temperatures are heating up early in the week. On Tuesday, it's looking partly cloudy, Unfortunately, there will be no chance of meatballs. However, there is a high of 64 and a low of 48. On Wednesday, continues the trend of higher temperatures with a high of 65 and a low of 57. Great day to take the dogs out for a walk. On Thursday, it spent a chance of showers with a high of 63 and a low of 42. The chance of showers continues on Friday with temperatures start to fall with a high of 54 and a low of 35. As the weekend rolls in, the cooler temperatures follow with a high of 46 and a low of 30 on Saturday, and Sunday follows a similar trend as the high comes in at 46 and the low at 31 degrees. That's all from me. That's a Gabby at the news desk. Thanks, Jaden. Andy Newman has another Charger Challenge for us this week. Today we have students identify as celebrities in this game of Guess That Picture. Hello, welcome to Season 4, Week 6 of the Charter Challenge. I'm your host, Andy Newman, and today we're going to have two contestants doing a Guess Who It Is game, all to win. Thank you, Gage. The Studio 415 Cup 4, Final Edition. Let's do this thing. Uh, my name's Cam Nidens. I went to Hickory Center Elementary School, and I'm going to win because I'm the best. Uh, my name is Michael Dierkman. I went to Hickory Center Elementary. I'm going because I need redemption. 
All right, guys, we're going to show 25 characters up here on the screen. You're going to have to shout it out first. Whoever shouts it out first, I will be the dictator, so I will tell who shouted out first is going to get that point. Whoever has the most points at the end of this round wins the Charger Challenge. You guys ready? I get it. All right, ready to go. Let's start in three, two, one. Who's that? Peter. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm going to give it to who do we think? We're giving it to Michael. We're giving it to Michael. All right, next one. Captain America. Michael. Michael 2. Cam 0. Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. Michael Jackson. We're going to Cam. 2 1. <laughs> Don't know who that is. Robert De Niro? No. Dear God, that is President Teddy Roosevelt. Are you, are you kidding me? Okay. All right. Who Godzilla. is that? Who just said Godzilla? All right. Wow. Michael 3 1. Let's hope he doesn't blow this lead. All right. Oh, I don't know. Saturday Night Live, I don't know. Close, but not really. That is David Letterman. Yeah, David, David Letterman. Letterman. All right, Michael's still up 3-1. Who's Jacob that? Booth. That is Jacob Booth. <laughs> Jacob Booth, the man, the myth, the sunglass guy. All righty, that is 3-2. Who's this? Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning, that would be Michael, 4-2. Coach Beasley. Yeah. No, he said Beasley first. We're going to go. It is 4-3. Th Green Lantern. Yep. 5-3, Michael. Michael Scott. Yes, 6-3, Michael. Give, give. Yes, that is Cam. 6-4. The Airbender. Yes, that'll work. 7-4 for Michael. Beirut. Yes, 7-5. Oh. Gordon Ramsay. Yes, that is Gordon Ramsay. 8-5. Luke Skywalker. That is Luke Skywalker. We'll give it that. It is Mark Hamill, really. If you didn't get Teddy Roosevelt, you're not going to get this guy. That would be Gerald Ford, Vice President, or actually Secretary of State for Richard Nixon once he got uh, kicked out of office. Tom Who's Holland. that? Tom Holland. Ooh, all right. What? If Michael blows this lead, I will be the most surprised man of all time. Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny. Michael again. Cam just getting destroyed. Michael Jackson. Wait. No, that is, yeah, oh. that is the weekend. He kind of looks like Michael Jackson with the red. Samuel Jackson. No. Yes, that'll work. It is also Mace Windu, if you want to call him that. Phineas. Phineas. Okay, I'm going to go tie there. So we're going to, oh, we're giving it to Michael. Zach and Cody. Oh, yes. Yeah. LeBron James. I think I'm going to go with Cam there. No. Spock. Spock. It is Spock. Yes. Cam, you have lost Michael. Ooh. For the love of God, you've actually won a charter <laughs> challenge. How do you feel, sir? Great. As long as there's no overtime. Yeah, there is no overtime. Okay, good. After the challenge, because there was no overtime, Michael Dirkman is your winner. Michael, how do you feel? Great. Great again. What is with the greats? And Cam, how do you feel? You kind of failed on this one. Uh, quick thinking is just not my thing, I guess. He is a baseball player. That might be coming handy at some point. Charger challenge. That's all we have for today. Thanks for watching. If you have a story you'd like us to cover, please let us know. For all of us here at Studio 415, have a great day, Carol.